Let's review optic disc drusen. Optic disc drusen are hyaline or calcified nodules within the optic nerve head. They are theorized to be a product of intraaxonal mitochondrial damage from impaired axonal transport and metabolism. They are benign but may cause visual loss and are often mistaken for true optic nerve edema. Optic disc drusen are the most common cause of pseudopapal edema in children. Optic disc drusen are common with a reported prevalence ranging from 0.34% clinically to 2% in autopsy studies. Approximately 75% are bilateral. They are frequently inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern, but also occur in isolation. Optic disc drusen are associated with retinitis pigmentosa and pseudoxanthoma elasticum with angioid streaks and are reportedly associated with papillitis, optic atrophy, chronic glaucoma, and vascular occlusions. Most cases of optic disc drusen are asymptomatic. While visual field defects are common, present in approximately 75% of cases, most patients are not aware of the visual field defects. Remember that 75% of cases are bilateral and 75% have visual field defects. The visual field defects typically follow nerve fiber bundles resulting in glaucoma-like visual field defects. Inferior nasal defects are common with arcuate defects, peripheral constriction, and central scotoma also possible. These visual field defects are typically stable but may slowly worsen over time. 8.6% of patients experience transient visual obscurations. There are five typical causes of visual loss in optic disc drusen. Direct axonal compression, focal infarction, ischemic optic neuropathy, retinal vascular occlusion, and peripapillary choroidal neovascularization. Visual loss from vascular causes is rare. In most cases, visual acuity is unaffected. There are five clinical features of optic disc drusen that you should look for. Elevation, small and crowded nerve, irregular or scalloped edges, clear view of the retinal vasculature, and anomalous vascular branching patterns. Optic disc drusen change appearance throughout life. In childhood, the drusen may be buried and may resemble optic nerve edema, eventually reaching the optic nerve surface where they appear as round, whitish-yellow refractile bodies. In later years, the drusen may regress, resulting in an atrophic appearing optic nerve with minimal elevation. The main goal of diagnosing optic disc drusen is to differentiate it from true optic nerve edema. There are four ancillary testing modalities that assist in evaluating optic disc drusen. While not all of these tests are necessary for diagnosis, they are helpful when we are confronted with optic nerves that could be swollen or have optic disc drusen. The tests are autofluorescence, fluorescein angiography, B-scan ultrasonography, and optical coherence tomography. Surface optic disc drusen autofluoresce readily, but buried drusen may not be visible on autofluorescence. Fluorescein angiography reveals no leakage in optic disc drusen. If late leakage is present in a patient with visible optic disc drusen, concurrent true optic nerve edema should be considered. B-scan ultrasonography may reveal calcified drusen, which are highly reflective even with decreased ultrasound gain. B-scan ultrasonography can also be used to measure the diameter or width of the optic nerve, which is normal in optic disc drusen, but widened in papal edema. OCT using a line scan through the optic nerve may reveal hyporeflective drusen. Enhanced depth imaging and swept source OCT techniques allow for better visualization of buried drusen. CT is not used to evaluate optic disc drusen, but may be used to rule out intracranial or optic nerve tumors. Calcifications at the optic nerve head may be seen on CT indicative of calcific drusen. Histologically, optic disc drusen appear as basophilic calcified acellular deposits containing mucopolysaccharides, amino acids, DNA, RNA, and iron. They are typically located anterior to the lamina cribrosa, and posterior to Brook membrane in the lamina choroidalis portion of the intraocular optic nerve. There is no proven treatment for drusen. Progressive cases may be challenging, and declining visual acuity in the setting of optic disc drusen should prompt further investigation into other causes of visual loss. In summary, optic disc drusen are hyaline or calcium deposits at the optic nerve head. They are thought to be a byproduct of abnormal mitochondrial metabolism in axonal transport within the ganglion cell layer axons. Optic nerve drusen is the most common cause of pseudopapal edema in children. It is bilateral in 75% and may be inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion. 
Optic dystrusin is associated with retinitis pigmentosa and pseudoxanthoma elasticum. Most patients are asymptomatic but may have glaucoma-like visual field defects in up to 75%, with the most common visual field defect being an inferior nasal step. Over time, the visual field may progress to complete peripheral constriction, but visual acuity is rarely affected. Five causes of visual loss in optic dystrusin include direct axonal compression, focal infarction, ischemic optic neuropathy, retinal vascular occlusion, and peripapillary choroidal neovascularization. Five clinical features of optic dystrusin include elevation, small and crowded nerve, irregular or scalloped edges, clear view of the retinal vasculature, and anomalous vascular branching patterns. The four ancillary tests helpful in differentiating optic dystrusin from true optic nerve edema are autofluorescence, fluorescein angiography, B-scan ultrasonography, and OCT. CT is not typically used to diagnose optic dystrusin, but calcified drusen may be visible at the optic nerve head. Histologically, optic dystrusin are basophilic and may contain calcium, mucopolysaccharides, and iron. There is no proven treatment for optic nerve drusen. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. If you found this review useful, please like this video and subscribe for more content. If you'd like to see more videos like this, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Until next time, happy studying!